it has all come down to this. The Justice League, the Dark Team, the Suicide Squad, and the Teen Titans must work together to face off against the forces of the Planet Apocalypse led by Darkseid in the final movie in the DC animated movie universe we're talking about Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. I started this series back in the spring and I wanted to review every DC AMU movie. Not every DC animated movie, but the ones that actually fit as part of the animated movie universe. The ones that are kind of tied together. And I started with Justice League Flashpoint Paradox and now we're ending here with Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. This movie is supposed to be like the Avengers Endgame of this saga. Every other film prior to this one was building up to this one, which is why we have such a huge ensemble cast and an appearance from pretty much every single or almost, not everyone, but almost every character that was in the previous films in the DCAMU as they battled Darkseid once and for all. But... Is this movie going to stick the landing? Does this movie satisfy like what Avengers Endgame did? You know, it's tricky because making this capstone movie, making a capstone movie that closes out an entire saga can be very, very difficult because you have to make sure you stick the landing right. I felt like The Rise of Skywalker failed completely, whereas Avengers Endgame succeeded. Everyone has their own opinion, but that's what I thought. So going into this movie... I was kind of dreading it because I wasn't sure what to expect and I knew that there's going to be a lot of characters and a lot of story arcs that they had to kind of, you know, close up. And now that I have seen it, now that I have finally seen Apocalypse War and I've seen the entire saga, there are things that I really, really loved about this movie and there are things that I did not like about this movie. And I think the main issue with this is the fact that it's only 90 minutes. This is a very big story. It's a very big climactic finale to this very long arc. And it would have been better for me if they would have split this movie into two parts. And maybe done each of them 90 minutes or maybe done a two-hour movie or two-and-a-half-hour movie. Because to me... I know that animated movies usually don't go past 90 minutes. That's just a rule that the industry's kind of had for years and years and years. I understand that. But when you're doing a continuing saga, there's a lot of things in this film that felt rushed. There's a lot of things where they didn't give the characters enough time to breathe. They had to wrap up all these story arcs and these relationships between different characters and kind of touch on their histories and whatnot. It's very difficult to watch this without seeing the previous ones because you might not have any clue about what's going on. And that's fine, but I feel like there could have been more character moments. And by the second half of the movie, I thought that they were just trying to like get it over with is what I felt. Whereas it didn't really have enough time to breathe. And that's because they try to cram too much into this 90 minutes. You know, this is a story arc that's borrowing several different comic book story arcs. The most famous one is probably Final Crisis from Grant Morrison. But it also takes elements from Dark Side War and from Future's End as well. But it kind of mixes it all together. So, in this movie, like the beginning of the movie, right is the Justice League, now with Lex Luthor, taking the war to Planet Apocalypse. They want to go out there, instead of waiting for Darkseid to come to Earth again, they want to take the fight to him. And it's kind of interesting, because they take this trip to Apocalypse, and then we have like a time skip. Two years have passed, and the Justice League have lost. This was kind of a shocking twist. It kind of reminds me of what they did in Endgame with the five-year time skip after Thor beheads Thanos. This was like that, except that in this one, the villain won. Darkseid was not beaten by the League. And not only did they lose, but they lost pretty badly. Because now Darkseid has an upgraded army of parademons, now called Paradooms, who are basically these, like, genetically modified parademons, but they're made up of the blood of Doomsday, that really powerful Kryptonian blood. So he's got kind of like an army of supermen. And the Justice League get wiped out. And like I said, they get wiped out badly. Tons of people die. Others end up being turned into evil slaves. And even others end up getting depowered. Like, for example, Superman. 
he has no powers anymore. And so what ends up happening is the remaining heroes who did not die after the two years have to go recruit John Constantine and other of the remaining heroes to try to figure out how they're going to be able to actually flip this and beat Darkseid. But Darkseid stacks the deck because you've got tons of heroes who are now brainwashed by Darkseid working for him on top of the fact that you've got you know, the Paradoom, the Paradoom army. Batman is now working for Darkseid. Cyborg is one of his slaves. Later on in the film, we find out that Wonder Woman and Mira and Hawkman and Starfire and Martian Manhunter are all like, have all been like, they have these like upgraded cyborg implants and they're also working for Darkseid. So, um, it, it's really the deck is stacked. The reason why the movie's called Justice League Dark Apocalypse War is because even though the movie is about the entire league, in fact, it's about all these heroes, the movie does center around Constantine because he's kind of like the backbone to the film. We kind of follow his story. We kind of follow it from his perspective, probably because Constantine came off like the most everyman character. He's like the guy who many of us can relate to in the film. He's not a superpowered, you know, alien or whatever. He's not an Atlantean or anything like that. But he is somebody who had to learn how to use his powers, his magic and whatnot. He's not, I mean, he's got powers, but not like the others. So, and because Batman's on, on the evil side, we can't really follow along with him. I did really like how we have an older Damian Wayne here. I did appreciate that touch. And I love how they hearken back to Damian Wayne and, and not only his relationship with Raven, but also with Batman in the movie. I really like that. And let me tell you, the gore in this movie, I mean, dude, this movie, it... It's really, really violent. It's one of the most violent um, superhero movies I've ever seen animated-wise. And I'm not complaining about that. This is not a complaint. It's just something that I think people should be aware of. Because when I say that the League got killed, I'm talking about, like, people... There are heroes in this movie that get disemboweled. They get ripped in half. They get disintegrated, blasted into pieces. Like, a lot of motherfuckers die in this movie, yo. A lot of them die. And, you know, that's just all done to kind of progress the story and to make the stakes bigger and to make us as an audience say, hey, this is pretty damn serious. This is a pretty serious situation. But I did like how they were able to tie some things back. Like, for example, speaking of Raven, you know, the storyline with her father Trigon and like what happened, you know, in the Teen Titans movie that gets addressed here because Trigon does come back. And I actually kind of thought it was pretty cool when we saw that Trigon-Superman-like fusion or whatever. And I liked how they used Trigon at the end. Um, I also did like the Superman-Dark Side fight, but again, it did feel very rushed. You know, when Clark does get his powers back, it did feel very rushed, and I felt like it could have been done better. This whole thing would have been executed a lot better if it was two parts. I mean, that's really the issue. There is too much story... Um, some of the humor for me does not really hit, um, you know, some of the, I, I think the Lois Lane, like, scene where she kind of, like, shocks Clark back into his senses, I feel like, you know, when he gets possessed by Trigon, I feel like that was a bit predictable, it's kind of like what they did in Justice League, when Lois showed up, and then Superman calmed down, you know, like that, um, I also thought that Batman going from evil to good was a bit rushed. I, a lot of the problems is the timing. And I did like the idea of Lex Luthor being the uh, the mole who's feeding information to the League from Apocalypse. I felt like the first half of this movie was very, very slow. And the second half was very, very fast. Which is why I felt it would be better if it was, you know two parts um i like the you know the whole how how dark this movie is because it really is a dark it's not a happy film now when it comes to the ending of the movie with uh the flash uh once again creating another flashpoint i i don't know how i feel about that ending y'all like i i kind of like it because it kind of has this um you know, the battle is not over, it'll never be over type of vibe to it, you know, it, it kind of has this, um, the story will always continue, the heroes will always try to do good even if they fail, and you know, and all that, but at the same time, it, it, in some ways, I could see some people watching this movie and saying that if the Flash is going to go back and do another Flashpoint and reset the timeline and erase everything that's happened in this entire DCAMU, that it devalues the entire saga. I don't think it does. 
But if you were to argue with me and you were to say, dude, I think this ruins the entire saga, I couldn't really find a good argument to go against you. Like, I understand your opinion. It's a difference of opinion type of thing. I thought it was a fine ending, but I could see why somebody would not like it and say, well, that kind of takes away from everything that's happened. You know, we're, we're going to... All the bonding moments, everything with Damian Wayne and Batman and all the great storylines we've had are all going to be wiped away because they lost. I mean, they, they won, but they lost because at the end of the movie, they even tell you that, you know, um, the Earth is, is going to... There's still going to be billions of people who are going to die because of the fact that the Earth is like, is like mistilted because the core was damaged. So even though they may have been able to defeat Darkseid, it still was a thing where the world is screwed. And I, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's dark. It's a dark story. When it comes to voice talent, I mean, they're all back here. Matt Ryan is back as Constantine. You know, uh, Jerry O'Connell is back. Tony Todd does a great dark side, really enjoyed it. Stuart Allen as Damian Wayne, uh, a little bit of a deeper voice because the older Damian Wayne. Jason O'Mara as Bruce Wayne, Batman, he's going to nail it. Rosario Dawson's back. Rebecca Romaine, not many lines for her, but everyone who kind of was around uh, in the past came back. I mean, not every single person, but the movie does have lots of cameos, and sometimes the cameos don't really have any any voices. You know, you just kind of see them, like, briefly. Like, for example, there was a cameo of Batwoman as in the movie, um, Nightwing's in the movie, Batgirl's in the movie, um, you know, Aquaman doesn't even do anything, really, like, you know, very little... I do love the scene with the Green Lantern Corps and their kind of issue, you know, with with Darkseid. I thought that was kind of a cool, like, deep cut there. But again, that whole sequence could have been expanded out more and been better. Um, ultimately, I was a bit disappointed, if I'm being honest. I know that this movie got a lot of good reviews, and I'm not saying it's a bad review. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. But I was a bit let down because I was probably expecting a lot more. I was hoping it would be as good as Reign of the Superman, which is probably, at least of the big epic ones, the non-Batman ones, that's probably my favorite one. So this was not my favorite at all. It just It's in the upper tier. I would say middle to upper tier of all the movies, but it's not my favorite. I actually enjoyed Flashpoint Paradox and the first Justice League Dark Side Conflict. I actually liked that one more than this one. It just felt, maybe it was just more up my alley. It kind of had that whole Super Friends vibe from like back in the day. This one was very dark, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. They had to go dark. I enjoyed it. Don't, I'm not saying I didn't, but I was a bit disappointed. Because I thought it could have been executed better. I think maybe if they, maybe if they toned down how many heroes were going to be in it, or at least made it longer, it could have worked. Um, but it's difficult. This was a very, this is probably a very difficult movie to write, which is why I'm not gonna, you know say it was terrible and all this it wasn't this was a good movie but i know that you know the writers margaret scott and ernie altbacker they had to have had some issues writing this because it's tough i mean just imagine you have to wrap up this whole saga you know at least marvel had infinity war and endgame it was a two-part story whereas here it was just one movie and they had to wrap everything up so what can you do now, um, some of you might be asking me, or probably thinking, are you going to cover the DC Rebirth movies, starting with Superman, Man of Tomorrow? And I think I will, but I'm not sure when. I definitely want to, because Batman The Long Halloween is one I've been wanting to see for a while, and I know it's been out. And, you know, the DC Rebirth series is a different, it's a different continuity. It's a brand new continuity in the movies, um, and I do want to check those out. I'm not sure when I'm going to start that series, but probably soon, and uh, here on the channel, because I might want to review Batman The Long Halloween, but like on Halloween or right before it, you know, right around that time period, because uh, I really love that, like I love the trailers, and I've never actually read the comic book version of that story, dude, and I probably need to, so, because um, that's a classic story from what I understand, and that's one that I would love to hear. Or, and love to watch, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. I might also review some of the other movies, that uh, animated movies like The Dark Knight Returns, and maybe watch Mask of the Phantasms. I haven't seen that movie in years. Like, there's a lot of good content. Uh, Animated-wise, DC nails it, and even though not every movie in the DC AMU was that great, 
they not, they weren't all masterpieces. There were enough good ones and enough great ones that I would consider the whole saga a thumbs up. There was a lot of good movies here. And like I said, closing out a saga is difficult. But overall, this movie, it does get a thumbs up by me, um, but I did feel like it could have been done better. That's basically my review of it. What did you think? Let me know, and I'll see you guys very soon. And I want to thank you for joining me on this journey, going through the DC AMU, and join me for when we do the Rebirth movies. I think I will do them very soon. So I'll see you then.